everybody, my name's Darylin and I'm the local heritage librarian here at Shoalhaven Libraries. Today I thought we'd do a little talk about researching your military ancestors. Let's enjoy. Welcome to this month's family history talk. We're coming up to Anzac Day. It's going to be a very different Anzac Day this year of course, but we're still going to be able to have a look at our families have a look at whether we have any uncles, aunts, grandmas, grandpas who served in the military. Uh, being a military area with HMAS Albatross and HMAS Creswell, we do have a lot of military in the area. And I'm going to take us through uh, some resources, give you some ideas as to how you might be able to find family members' military records. And what's the best place to start when you're looking for Australian military records? There's actually two places. The best place to start is the Australian War Memorial, which um, rather unfortunately keeps updating its website. Every time I go in, I have to redo this PowerPoint because they've made it more beautiful and more amazing. But the information stays the same. There's a number of options. There's a number of ways you can get to the records that you're after. Best way, this is our front page. The best way is to go to collection. And if we click on collection, then it'll give us some options such as understanding our collection. And once you get to that point, then it's right there in front of you, researching a person. And that will give you some great step-by-step -step, um, ideas as to how to go about this search. Researching a person. So that's one option. Your other option, because there are many roads to get to the same point in uh, the War Memorial's website, the other option is you've scrolled all the way down your front page. You've got some options across the bottom, one of which is explore the collection. And that takes you right into the nitty gritty and the meat of what you're after. Military events, military units, places that um, campaigns may have occurred, people, people themselves, articles about said campaigns. And last but not least, you also have the option on the front page to do your standard keyword search. Uh, I'm going to focus on a gentleman by the name of Walter Host. He was a local and he fought in World War One. So I'm just going to pop his name in there. It's as simple as that. Two words, two names, first name, last name. And let's see what we come up with. What we come up with is 11 matches to people records, two matches to place records. So um, hopefully that will give you a hint that you've got the right person. I can look at that myself and go, yes, he did come from Justice Brush and yes, he did fight in France. So I'm fairly confident I'm on the right track there. Go a little bit deeper and we can narrow the down the search a little bit more. We can narrow it down. Do we want records when he was a sergeant, records when he was a lieutenant? Uh, we know he fought in World War I. We've already looked at the places. We've got some information there such as, yes, his full name, his service number. That's quite important when you go searching for soldiers. Uh, it's a unique number to that person, so nobody else has or ever will be service number 702. It's given us his unit. And there's probably some more information there too if we keep scrolling down. As I said, we can just keep going deeper and deeper as we go into the layers. In this case, this record's going to lead us through to World War embarkation roles. So every soldier that stepped foot on a ship, they would have been listed on an embarkation role, you would hope anyway. And so we've got their digitisation of the embarkation role record. In this case, the page that's pertinent to Walter. It's really not giving us a lot more than we already knew, except as we've gotten down the bottom there, now it's telling us that he uh, left Sydney, place of embarkation, on the 18th of October, 1914. 
and he sailed on the HMAT Suffolk, which I'm going to guess is Her Majesty's Australian Transport, as opposed to HMAS, which is Her Majesty's Australian Ship. A really good um, set of records to get into uh, is the Australian Red Cross Wounded and Missing Files. They're really good. They're also quite distressing. Uh, so in this case, Walter was, spoiler alert, spo he didn't make it back. He was killed overseas. Uh, we've always had some difference of opinion within my family as to what happened. Just minor details. We can now get into the Red Cross missing files and um, we can see live, so to speak, reports on what happened, which, as I said, can be really sad, can also be um, quite distressing, but also fascinating. So if we go a little bit further and we download a PDF. So, for example, um, there was a lot of paperwork in this file, but for example, we have a letter here from a Mr. A.C. Wildon, I think it's actually Wilson. Um, this is a report. This is his report as to what he thought happened. I knew Mr. Host. He was in this division and I saw him lying wounded, shot through the stomach at Pozieres by a bullet on the 24th of July, 1916. Um, that is the, the mainly held story in my family was, yes, he was out escorting and he was killed by a stray bullet. Um, so, very sad, especially that last line, I do not know where he was buried. Um, but it does, as you read through the letters and reports, it does go to make up a picture, which, sad as it is, is also very interesting. Uh, to go back to the Australian War Memorial, you can have a look at things like the Roll of Honour. Again, hmm, not probably telling us much more than we already know, but it adds to corroborate and back up the information that you're pulling together, which is always good. Uh, this does have a little bit more. This one is telling us that, yes, place of death, date of death, died of wounds. And uh, the report that we read said he did not know where he was buried. Well, in this case, we now do know where he was buried, which again will take us a step further. So lots and lots of things that you can find. Again, nominal roles. Every war has a nominal role. That will give us a little bit more information of a different sort. In this case, this is going to tell us that he was 19 when he enlisted. He was a carpenter. Uh, he was single and he was the son of L.C. Host of Berry and he was Church of England. So, a few more bits of pieces of information there from that nominal role. So that's stuff from the Australian War Memorial. I said there were two places to go to. The other place that you head to is the Australian Archives. The majority of your records are going to be with the Australian Archives, not the State Archives, because apart from the Boer War, all our conflicts have been fought as a federation. So we're looking at Australian records when it comes to defence records. And if you go to the National Archives, which also changed its website in the last 12 months, um, you can find what we call personal dossiers. Again, there's a few different ways and means to get into the actual meat of the records. And again, lots of um, information and helpful hints and background information to work through. Or you can just go straight to record search. You can discover the National Archives and go straight to record search. And you can finally make it to record search. Again, really easy to use. We're just going to put in two words, first name, last name, I am also going to put some dates in to narrow it down because we've been a federation for over 100 years. That's a lot of records to trawl through looking for Walter Host. 
Um, I know it was World War I conflict, so I'm going to put in 1915 to 1918. Which is going to bring up our records. Uh, again, make sure you've got the right one. That's looking pretty good. Service number matches, place of birth matches, next of kin works. What we're really excited to see is up in the top right hand corner, view digital copy. Most of the World War I records have been digitised now. That was a big project done for the World War I centenary. So with a bit of luck, uh, particularly at the moment when we are, we're all staying home, we can search these records and read through them without leaving the comfort of our own home. This particular dossier has 18 pages in it. Some are quite large, some are quite small. It depends on what action the soldier may have seen, how high up in the rankings they were perhaps. So yes, in this case we can um, make our way through 18 pages. The front page is usually the uh, enlistment paperwork. And yes, typically a service record package contains attestation papers, statement of service, casualty forms, correspondence and other miscellaneous paperwork. So that's a really good thing to find. Um, we might come back to that. Other things you can find whilst you're at the uh, Australian Archives, again, the role of honour. We looked at that at the Australian War Memorial, commemorative role, debt of honour register, and uh, one that we are interested in particularly, the Office of Australian War Graves. So we can jump to another website. We can go to the Commonwealth War Graves Commission. Again, we can search for Walter Host. I'm going to stick his middle name in there since we now know it. And uh, we've got our results there. Lieutenant Host, Walter Joseph, date of death, the um, regiment he served with, the Australian Infantry, because this is an overseas grave, so you're going to have British people, New Zealand people, Canadian people. It's going to give us um, things like the transcription that has gone on his gravestone over in France. That's given us a little bit more information. We've got his father's name and his mother's name there and also uh, the inscription that they asked to have written on that grave. And I haven't been to France. I'm probably not likely to get there anytime soon either but I can visit online, which is really good. So we've got a location of where that particular grave is. It's at the Somme. How many casualties were buried there? A few more uh, details and we can even go for a virtual tour. Also in the Commonwealth War Graves Commission archives, more paperwork some um, original records as to which men were buried there, a bit more detail. Um, this is a bit concerning that his has actually been written in over someone that was typed. Not too sure about that. <laughs> and, uh, and then we've got the official gazetted version as well. You can also find things like the medals that were awarded and there's various uh, places that you can hope to find a photo if you're lucky. A lot of the men did have photos taken when they were over there. Another good way to build out your information is to research your unit. We've gone back to the War Memorial for here, so the War Memorial has a lot of information on the various units. And of course there's always good old Wikipedia, which is um, not a bad resource as long as you check your references. Last but not least, Trove newspapers with the National Library. Again, you'll um, find death notices, um, even just um, community information notices. It was um, again interesting but rather sad. 
So when I went through the newspapers looking for any references to Walter, uh, we found a little paragraph that he was reported missing to begin with. And then a few months later, good news, Mr. and Mrs. Host have received four field cards and a letter which states that he is still in the trenches but well in health. So hopes are up again, our boy is okay. Um, but then unfortunately we get the um, official letter from France stating that he has been killed. Um, that was interesting in that they actually printed the actual letter in the paper. Uh, you might not get that lucky. So again, sad but good to find. Uh, you might also be lucky if you go to the State Library of New South Wales in this instance, the State Library for their centenary celebrations, celebrations, commemorations. Uh, they uh, made an effort to pull together a lot of personal diaries and letters from World, the First World War. I have had a gentleman in here who was lucky enough to have a um, family member's diaries at the, state, uh, at the State Library and he was able to access them from here and transcribe them and print them out, which was great. And then something new that they've just put up for the current times, we've got some podcast series. So just a little bit of a side there, another interesting thing you can find at the War Memorial. So that's World War I. Um, moving along, we can also have a look for people who served in World War II. In this instance, I'm going to have a look for a World War II prisoner of war. Now, not all the World War II records have been digitised. I'm assuming that will be the next project as we get closer to that 100-year anniversary. A uh, bit more of a deep dive here. I'm taking a chance. Roberts is a fairly common name, apparently. so. Let's see what happens. Let's see how many we pull up just putting in Roberts. Um, I actually couldn't remember my great, great uncle's name. Um, but once I found the right matching initials, I knew we had a, a number of names. I figured I was at the right place. I'll go a bit deeper and see if I've made the right decision. So there he is, Lance Sargent. LHS Roberts, uh, serving in Malaya, prisoner of war, and again, that all-important service number. Now that I've got the service number, even though I've still only got his initials, I can go to the archives and I can pop that service number into my search box. So I can say Roberts, I can say World War II, and I can put that unique number in. And hopefully, yes, that's the right person. We've got his record there. Roberts Lloyd Henry Skirfield. That matches, that's a family name. States correct, Queensland. And the next of kin I know is correct as well. So I think I've got the right person there. And again, happy days, we can view a digital copy. So again, we can look at his um, enlistment forms. He's only got 16 pieces of paper in his dossier, so not as much, um, possibly because he spent a large portion of the war in a prisoner of war camp. Not much paperwork to be made at that point. Um, yes, and as you can see, there's a service and casualty form there. And yes, 15th of Feb, 1942, prisoner of war. Not knowing much about this side of the family, I thought I'd do another trove search and I'd have a look for Sergeant Lloyd Roberts. Um, I did know this, but it was good to get some um, further information. He did make it back, unlike Paul Walter. <laughs> and um, yes, as this says, having endured indescribable horrors at the hands of the Japanese in prison camps, Sergeant Lloyd Henry Skirfield is um, attempting to enter Parliament. He did. He was a Queensland parliamentary member and he didn't do too bad, apparently. And one of the portfolios, 
one of his passions was returning servicemen, of course. So again, we go into Trove, we can build a picture of the man. A bit more information there, federal elections. Okay, so, oh, see, I thought it was state. It's actually federal. And again, we can go back into good old Google. We know where he served, what battalion he served with now that we've had a look at his records. We can look up his battalion and see if we can get some more information on the battalion itself. Information there. A lot of the battalions, a lot of the men and service women uh, have put together websites about their particular battalions, which is great. And if you're really lucky, I love photographs. There's a photograph there and it, um, it wasn't hard to spot him actually. He looks just like my dad. <laughs> So that was, that was a wonderful find there, that someone's actually thought to include a photo there in that web website. And also, if I head over to the Department of Veteran Affairs, I can print out a service certificate, which is nice. Keep moving forward again. Um, I'm skipping Korea for no particular reason except, luckily, I don't have any family members that served at Korea do have family members that served in Vietnam, so we'll give this a shot. We're back to the Australian War Memorial at this point. You can see there's a lot of listings for various conflicts down the side there if you want to do a filter search in that instance. I'm going to look for a cousin or my mum's cousin in this case, and again, I'd forgotten the name, dreadful of me. I knew the surname, so we'll put the surname in. And I knew I wanted Vietnam, so we'll narrow it down to that. I got some results. Again, are they the right results? Let's see. They actually were not the right results. I looked at that and went, mm, I don't think that name's right. And as um, lovely as my mum's cousin was, I don't think he, was, he got any awards or recommendations in that respect. So, what do we do? We have a look at a different website. Let's try going back to the Veteran Affairs and searching through the nominal roles and seeing what we can find. So we've gone to the Veterans Affairs, we've gone to the nominal roles, we've put in what we know, which is very little unfortunately, a surname and a conflict. But this time we've had a bit more success. So I've run my eye down that list of Bennetts and I've come to Edwin Ernest and gone, that's right, his name's Teddy and Ernest is after great grandpa. So I'm fairly certain I've got the right person now. I've got the service number there. Date of birth looks right, 1946. And yes, Penrith is the right area. So I'm fairly confident I've got the right person this time. So I can go back to, well actually I can stay at the Department of Veteran Affairs, go in a little bit deeper, still got that number there, mm, haven't really picked up much more information, we know he's a private. Now we can head back to the National Archives, I'm just going to go straight in from my Google search into Defence and War Service Records. As I said, they've updated the website and now they've got all this lovely extra information that you can play around with, which is great. And I had to work out a different way of searching because it didn't look like this last time I went in. I was like, oh, okay, now what do I do? Have a play. You're not going to break anything. The best way to learn is just to explore through these websites. I've ended up back at record search because that's the best way to go. We've put Bennett in and um, I haven't worried about a service number at this point. I've refined the search or I will refine the search because there's far too many Bennetts there at that moment. Now I'm going to put in a, f a first and a second name, narrow it down. And this time we've got the record there, that's great, we've got the right person, 
This time, unfortunately, we haven't got a digital copy that we can access. We can request a copy, which is good. That means it's not locked down and inaccessible. Um, to request a copy, it does cost you a little bit of money and the powers that be will probably have to go through and make sure it's okay to release. Probably not high on their priorities. Um, but we can still go into the, back to the War Memorial and have a look at the battalion he served with. Again, it's got a lovely website as well that somebody's put together. Got a few extra resources there. There's actually a book that someone's written about that battalion service in Vietnam. It might be interesting. And again, we can go back to the Veterans Affairs and um, print out a service record. Sometimes you can get lucky. I couldn't access Cousin Teddy's record for whatever reason. I could, however, and this really surprised me when I came across this oh, a few years ago now, I can access my dad's Navy record. I'm guessing it's because there's nothing really confidential or anything in there. Uh, it kind of blew me away, really. Um, so yeah, I've got his service card there and various exams he took and good conduct badges and um, let's see where he served, where he was when he enlisted. So yeah, a few interesting points there. He did serve in Vietnam, albeit not actually in the country. He was on um, one of the ships that was escorting soldiers to Vietnam. Uh, so he does have a Vietnam record. Um, possibly he is able to be accessed because he wasn't actually in the country. And so again, we can download a lovely war service certificate. And finally, we've been to the National Archives, we've been to the War Memorial, we've done all the federal level stuff, but don't forget your local area information too. Don't forget your local historical society, particularly as we've just been through the centenary of World War One. most societies will have done a lot of research and put a lot of things together in regards to local soldiers. And also, in our case, here in this area, we're very lucky we have the Fleet Air Arm Museum too. So um, that's always another option to explore. Thank you very much. Hopefully that will give you some ideas and some directions as to where to go if you're searching military ancestors.